What's up, gaming family? Sega Man back here with another video. And today, I'm going to share a piece of uh, video game vintage history with you. Uh, talk about this system a little bit. Uh, what it could do. Because it could do different things. I have this in the box. Um, it's really very old. Very old system. Um, the box the guy bought it off of at the uh, flea market was in kind of bad condition. But at least he had the box with it. And for this system, he only charged me $20. And it's well worth it because it's way, way more if you try to find this online. And um, it's a piece of gaming history. And it needs to be talked about, uh, in my opinion. Because, you know, I'm also a collector, you know. Uh, and I want to talk about this system a little bit. And I'm going to show you the front of the box here um, in a minute. But, um, yeah, it uh, came out in 1984. It's a pretty cool uh, system here. Uh, but it didn't just play games. It also was a computer, a home computer. And we're talking about the Atari 600 XL. And this is what it looks like here. This is the front of it. That's what it looks like here. Now you can see it's all taped up because, you know, when I got it off of him, it, the, the box was just really bad condition. And from what I can tell, he had this um, for a long time. And um, on the back, it has, it'll tell you, like, it'll have, um, you know, Atari sound and graphics. Um, uh, this uh, uh, says many add-ons you could put to this thing. Um, uh, 16K uh, expandable memory. Uh, Built-in basic programming and languages. Professional keyboard for education. World processing games and more which was awesome and it says the official home computer uh, uh, the 1984 Olympics which is pretty cool so that's it here I know it's not it's very plain you know because it's such an old system you know uh, there's no bells and whistles to the artwork or the box here but um, we're going to actually open this up, and I'm going to give you an in-depth and closer look of the um, Atari 600 XL. So let's go ahead on and do that. And hopefully I can put it back in the way I take it out. You know, came in a nice little styrofoam casing here. When you're a collector, you have to really just try to take very well care of your stuff you know what I mean uh, this still works today I've tried this a year or two back on a regular uh, TV and it still works today actually all my vintage systems still work today sometimes you know it might not come in as well on the TV because of the old components that you had to hook up to the back of the TV but there's ways around that today so you can get a better clearer picture like they make components for the Coleco Vision and different uh, other peripherals for it so it can come in better. So with the Atari and um, the other older systems. So let's take a closer look at this. So what we're going to do here is actually, let's see, let's flip it around here. Let's take a closer look at this. Now, I do have the games for this um, little computer system. I didn't want to dig them out. Uh, I'll show them later on in another video when I'm going to show you like vintage uh, game cartridges and stuff like that. But um, I keep this in my garage in my basement, very well tucked in the box. And um, I will show you what the front of this actually looks like. So let's get into that right now so 
the first thing I'm going to actually show you of this system is the uh, the computer home computer system is the um, itself that the uh, main system itself very small very sleek and unique vintage looking um, Atari uh, 600 XL um, it has a red indicator uh, button on it. it has a keyboard that's what it looks like here and the tapes see this is metal uh, you know when you get into the later systems like the the the, uh, the Super NES the Sega Genesis and stuff their doors are plastic these are actually metal uh, to me uh, these older systems to me were made with a little bit more pride um, they were made better um, it still stands up today. There's no kind of, shows any kind of wear and tear on this. No kind of rust or anything like that. You know what I mean? And um, it, to me, it's still standing the test of time. You know, and on the side here, it has the reset, the option, select, uh, start, and it actually has a help button and a power button on there. So, you can't see it very well because of the lighting. But, to be, the, to tell you the truth, um, when you would play Atari 5200 games, which were bigger cartridges, this, the cartridges that played with this, with the games, I have like Donkey Kong, Miss Pac-Man, they're almost identical um, graphic-wise, or it might be, if I'm correct, I think it's the Atari 5200 or the 7800. Same graphics, in a way, packed into a, a smaller cartridge. And um, I was very impressed by it. The color, it came in great on my old TV uh, when I tried out my games. So what was really cool about this and what I think Atari was trying to do, Atari was, I would say, was trying to be a little bit ahead of its time. Because like I said, it's a home computer and it played video games. Now I have the, um, actually, where is it at? There's a controller port uh, that goes in this that you can also, I think, plug in the back, if I remember correctly. The off and on button is in the back. Um, also, it has a panel here, I think, where you can hook up other things, maybe a printer or some other kind of peripheral like that, which was cool, you know. And um, on, on the side here is where you can hook... Uh, actually, you can use, it, correct me if I'm wrong, I think I use the Sega Genesis controller to play the games because you can use Sega Genesis controllers with certain uh, systems. For instance, you can use a Sega Genesis 3-pad button controller with a ColecoVision. It would make it easier for you to use than using the, using the regular controller, which had a knob and stick and two uh, action buttons on the side and it also had in the front numbers like you would see on an old um, uh, like a big calculator or, or, or something like that but the controllers go in on the side right there so there's two two right there and it played excellent very excellent you know I, I sometimes I'll go back and hook up these systems and, and play them but um, it was very well worth the $20. And the thing is, it came with this huge, <laughs> huge power pack. Atari power pack. I mean, this thing is huge. It's almost as heavy as the old brick that you would get with the 360. Smaller, though. But this is the power pack that went with it. The plug and then the back to hook up into the back of the system. It's pretty heavy, pretty well made, pretty heavy, has a lot of weight to it. So it was pride made in, in, in these things, you know, back then. And uh, also, this is the um, part that goes into the TV. Uh, one part goes in, this part goes into the TV. This part goes into the back of the system. Like I said, you can buy different peripherals to fit onto this. To actually work uh, on an HD TV, I have a part that I bought from my exchange where I just put it on there. I think it it's it's yellow. 
you stick it on there, the sound and video will come through there. Uh, one of my friends sold it to me uh, when I was at the exchange. He just said it's an easier way to play and you'll get a better picture if you don't want to use the old components that came with it. And I have those downstairs actually. Uh, it has the two prongs on it and you hook it up into a uh, little cable thing that goes into the back of the TV where you would screw the cable in to your old school TVs and it would work like that. But this is the you know the video cable for it which is you know pretty awesome and um, like I said it's just it's just a good piece of gaming history and different things that Atari tried to do actually to compete actually with the Nintendo because Atari was actually still around and trying to compete with the regular NES but unfortunately um, they, they failed the only thing that kind of kept up with it that tried to keep up with the NES Back in those days, I would say it would be the Atari 7800. I also have one of those. But it try, they tried to. you know. And I also have another um, old vintage Atari system <clears throat> that I will show you guys at a later date. Now, that doesn't have a box, but it was more unique, different. Like, the way they um, made this thing was kind of cool. They were trying to like make it real sleek and cool, state-of-the-art, home you know, gaming system. And it was also pretty cool, and it took smaller cartridges also. And that still works today. And they even made a peripheral gun that looks identical almost to the light gun for the NES. So I just wanted to give you guys a little look back on one of my vintage systems that I still love near and dear today that I take very good care of and actually still works. You know, you have to take care of your things. I have a 3DO, and everybody always tells me, Sega Man, does your 3DO still work? And it's the Panasonic one, which is the best one, which is the most expensive one today. I think besides, there's another one. I think it's the, the uh, 3DO something. It's I think it's a little bit more expensive. It's not the Gold Star, but the Gold Star 3DO version has went up in price, but it still works. You know what I mean? A lot of things blow out in those older systems, and I still play it today. But I wanted to give you a little look at the uh, Atari 600XL computer gaming system. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I will be back pretty soon with another pickups video. I know you guys love the pickup videos. You know, that that's cool. You know, it's very well uh, appreciated by me that you come and watch uh, uh, those videos. But I like to do other stuff on my channel besides that, like tell you about or show you vintage uh, gaming systems that um, do reviews on old games and different things like that. So I want to thank everybody out there to, for subscribing to my channel. Uh, you guys rock. You know, uh, I'm just happy that uh, I like doing the things when it comes to games. I just like doing, uh, you know stuff about vintage games and gaming today because I'm a true gamer. You know what I mean? I, I love all games from all systems. You know what I mean? Yes, yes, I am a diehard Xbox fan, and, you know, that's never going to change. But I am not going to uh, neglect other systems that I own and the games that I enjoy on those systems. So thank you for subscribing, guys. Um, like I said, I'll be back with another video soon. Um, if you subscribe to my channel, I will subscribe back. I will check out your videos and I will comment on your on your videos if you have them. Some people subscribe and don't have any content and that's cool. Maybe they just like checking out Sega Man's channel and talking about old school games, man. That's what I'm all, I'm all about. And even, you know, I'll talk about my games today. So, thank you guys. You all rock. Enjoy the rest of your week. If you come up on the weekend, I hope you're enjoying everything you're playing when it comes to gaming on any system. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace and love. Xbox for life.